Welcome to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we are broadcasting live on September 10th from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. And I want to thank everyone, all the donors who contributed during the last week on WMNF. Tuesday Cafe made its goal thanks to the generosity of people like Leslie and Joe and Barbara and David and some others. WMNF still has a bit more to raise, so please make a contribution if you can at WMNF.org. And we're kicking off this show talking about a Florida education, sorry, Florida edu Florida election police, sorry about that. They have been questioning people in their homes about petitions they signed to get Florida's abortion rights amendment on the ballot. And our guest to talk about this is Justin Garcia. He's the Tampa Bay Times state and local accountability reporter. His focus is on law enforcement and the judicial system. And I want to welcome you back to Tuesday Cafe, Justin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. So we're going to back it up a little bit before this story. So just tell us, what is Amendment 4 and how did it get on the ballot? So Amendment 4 would essentially give um, bring back uh, abortion rights to the state of Florida and uh, give women control of their decision making and what to do with their bodies. Um, and uh, that it would essentially negate Ron DeSantis' six-week um, abortion ban that um, was enacted earlier this year. And it got on the ballot because uh, enough petition signatures were gathered by different groups uh, in order to put it on uh, November's ballot this year. And we'll, we'll be talking in this interview about some of those petition signatures, but we'll back up, even continue backing up here. And uh, it seems because it seems like the DeSantis administration is unleashing the apparatus of the state here to oppose this amendment. One example that, you know, we're going to talk about your reporting on how it's investigating whether there were fraudulent signatures. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But let's talk first about this this thing we learned about a little bit earlier, which is there's a website by the Florida Agency for Healthcare Administration that opposes Amendment 4. What do you know about that? Yeah, um, well, that was my colleague, Romy, who wrote that story. And it's about uh, the state essentially using taxpayer funds to to use this website to uh, promote Ron DeSantis's belief about abortion. Um, but I would like to back up even a little before that, because this all kind of started uh, last week when I received some information, because now, as well as focusing on law enforcement and the judicial system, I've also been tasked uh, until November with covering election integrity. And so this whole kind of thread of stories started uh, last week when I received a tip from a supervisor of elections um, from, from somebody who's associated with different supervisor of elections offices. Um, and they came to me and basically said that Ron DeSantis was, or the, the State Department, which works for Ron DeSantis, was requesting um, thousands of petitions, specifically to look at the signatures on those petitions um, in order to scrutinize them and see if they are actually valid petition signatures. And so that was early last week that, that we received that information, verified it with, I think, four different counties for our first story. Orange County, here in Hillsborough County, the, the State Department had, the Department of State had requested nearly 7,000 petitions. Um, and in Palm Beach County, they re requested to review the most over there, and that was about 17,000 of the petitions. And the supervisor there told me that that was about 150 hours of work um, for her office. Um, so, and even uh, the people who are requesting this from the Department of State were, were saying, we understand that this is a lot of work. And it is an election season too, right? So that's how this whole chain of stories started as we found out that they were requesting, you know, upwards of like 36,000 petitions from these different counties uh, around the state. And then hearing from them that this is going to be quite the, the task to go through. A lot of these are on paper, right? So they have to go through these boxes and go and find the petitions and the circulators they're talking about. So that way they can look at them and kind of scrutinize them as, as they're doing now. And I should probably point out that, unless I'm mistaken, it's not like uh, these signatures and these forms hadn't been looked at before and they were just counted automatically. These were the ones that were considered to be valid. Isn't that right? 
Yes, exactly. There was already this review process uh, earlier in the year, and that's already taken place. So they're specifically looking at these uh, signatures that were counted as valid already. Um, so that's something that some people have pointed out in the process of this story coming out is, you know, uh, it's highly unusual that the DeSantis administration would look at these verified signatures, right? Um, one supervisor of elections um, told us that it was unprecedented um, in her time uh, at doing her job and, and filling this role. Well, the, so that's one step in this story is that they're looking at these forms. They're they're kind of asking to examine these petition signatures. But you you and your group also found out that it, it goes even further where there are law enforcement officers from the state of Florida visiting people in their homes about this. What do we know? Yeah. So basically the day after that story about them going to these different counties, asking for all these petitions, we started hearing rumblings, and I think the first thing we saw was on social media of uh, a person posting on this group publicly saying that um, a officer, um, basically without any kind of visible identification, so a plainclothes officer, showed up to his house, asked him about the validity of his petition signature, um, and that he said, yeah, I, I did sign that. And he told the officer that it was his valid signature. Um, at one point, he asked for the officer's badge number. But but when we talked to him, he couldn't remember it. And so but when we when we did reach out to him, he was he was visibly he was very like shaken. You know, he said that it was something that kind of kind of threw him off, um, like he couldn't understand why they would show up to his house like that. And then there ended up being another resident of Lee County where that where that man lived who had experienced something similar, but they were looking for uh, her family member. And then she was standing there while the officer questioned the family member. And then that time the officer gave her a card. And that card said that he was with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, the Election Crimes Unit. Um, so then I was able to, you know, call him. He referred me to FDLE for comment. Uh, I ended up getting a comment from the Department of State where they essentially confirmed that they were doing this. And then we got that story out and um, that story went absolutely, um, you know, wild across the country. People were carrying it and talking about it. And now it's become a, a big topic of conversation. And, and since then, actually, DeSantis has defended the actions uh, that just happened yesterday during a press conference um, where he defended the actions of the, the police showing up at the doors and, and gathering all these signatures. Um, meanwhile, the Democrats were kind of blasting him and criticizing him for doing this. Yeah, we have a clip of DeSantis defending that. And I just want to remind people that our guest is Justin Garcia, the state and local accountability reporter for the Tampa Bay Times, who also looks into election integrity. We're talking about the Times' recent reporting on law enforcement showing up at the homes of people who signed a petition to get Amendment 4 on the ballot. This is Tuesday Cafe. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. I'm Sean Canan. So here is uh, what DeSantis said at a, law, at, at a press conference yesterday when he was asked about this story that, that uh, Justin is telling you about. It, it, anyone who submitted a petition uh, accurately that's a valid voter is totally within their rights to do it. They're not investigating that. What they're investigating is fraudulent petitions. They're investigating. I mean, we know that this that this group did submit on behalf of dead people. Uh, and I don't know how you do that. I mean, I thought that was a Chicago thing, but yet they did it here. Right. Uh, and so we know that. And then you also know that there are documented examples, which FDLE is looking at, where the petition and the name does not match the signature that's on file. And that's just the reality. So the question is, is, is that a valid signature or not? And it may be that the signature is totally different. And that voter will say, no, I actually did do that. Maybe they signed their name. That is absolutely possible. And if that's what you say, I think that's probably the end of it. But I, I do think that um, that they've identified uh, examples that are um, that are not valid, and 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 they they absolutely need to be. Anyone that is trying to commit fraud in this process absolutely should be held accountable. And what I found is, if people know that there's accountability, 
then it really deters others from wanting to do it uh, in the future. And the governor went on after that. I was going to play a longer clip, but honestly, he just went on and on and on about a whole bunch of things that I don't know how it was related to that question he started to talk about. And I'm, I'm going to point out point this out because it might be kind of a preview of what we might hear in the debate tonight. It sounded like a lot of um, kind of scare tactics, talking points. Uh, Governor DeSantis, I mean, he was asked about cops showing up at the voter doors of Florida voters, and he started talking about um, Haitians in, in Ohio and open borders and um, uh, non-U.S. citizens voting in city elections in some cities. I mean, it was it, it, he really went on and on, and kind of I think it might be a preview of what we might hear from Donald Trump tonight uh, about some of the scare tactic issues. But getting us going away from that, going back to the Florida story, Justin, um, any any uh, thing that the governor said there that uh, jumps out at you? Well, what it seems like uh, to me and some of my fellow reporters is that he's kind of blurring the lines there when he talks about. Um, issues with with petition signatures, those were found during the normal process of verifying the signatures, right? And those happen sometimes, and you just double check, and that's why they have that process to make sure and kind of weed things out. That already happened. He's not addressing the people who, people who are being approached to sign their valid verified signature, and they're being approached by police. He kind of sidestepped that question completely and then started talking about something different. Um, and so that's the important part to keep in mind here is, you know, keeping an eye on if they're actually answering the question directly or not is uh, is really important in, in an instance like that. And it, it just um, the, the issue here is definitely, you know, also transparency. Um, and that's why we're going to keep digging into into this and keeping an eye on how many counties this is spreading to. Um, we do encourage anybody who has been, you know, approached by uh, police at their door about their valid petition signature to reach out to us. Um, we're also trying to keep an eye on, you know, what other supervisor of elections offices are being approached about reviewing these thousands of, of petition signatures. So um, we'll be keeping our ears to the ground for sure. And um, I hope the community does reach out if this is spreading to other counties. Yeah, our guest is Justin Garcia, the state and local accountability reporter for the Tampa Bay Times. So I want to ask you if there's anything else about this story that we should know about. And if if not, um, we can jump into some of your other local reporting about uh, jails. Is there something else we should know about this? Um, just that we'll, we will be still on top of it. We will, we will be following it. Um, this obviously isn't going away, right? It seems like um, one thing that's becoming apparent is the state is throwing its full force behind standing against uh, that amendment passing. Um, and so this is going to be kind of a, a long couple months till November, uh, and we'll see how the cards fall and what happens there. Um, but as far as other local reporting, yeah, there, there was another story I did recently about uh, jails uh, being over full in Tampa Bay um, and people sleeping on floor beds in the, in the Pinellas County Jail. Hundreds of people are sleeping on beds that are on the floor held up by these little plastic frames and um, the sheriff over there and also the Hillsborough sheriff uh, said that at least part of the reason is because of a bail law that passed earlier this year that makes it more difficult for people to be released on their own recognizance until their court date. Um, it, it can also allow judges to set the bond higher than before, but if they wanted to lower the bond, they would have to get approval from the Supreme Court. So it's led to this kind of uh, situation where in Pinellas, especially, they only have one jail, right? And they don't have room to build another one or plans to build another one. So they're they're seeing people in there for DUI, for criminal mischief, for these uh, for trespassing, for these, you know, minor nonviolent misdemeanors. And they're getting stuck in there for sometimes months uh, because of this bail law. And in the story I did a few weeks ago, even one of the people who um, helped craft the law and, and pass it into law, uh, she was saying that uh, they need to the the reps that passed it need to look at it again, perhaps and and kind of review the law and see how they can address this problem. Whereas keeping these people who are nonviolent apparently and and seemingly not a threat to society um, being trapped in jail until their court date. So, what kind of fix might 
happened? Did the state representative mention what they might try to fix? Um, no, not directly. Um, I have to follow up with her, actually. I, I meant to. With stories like that, you always want to like follow up a couple weeks later, but then I immediately start getting pulled into all this other madness. Um, and so I definitely want to follow up with her soon um, and just to keep an eye on, on where the movement is there, because it really is not, according to uh, Pinellas Sheriff Bob Gaultieri and, and others, it's just not sustainable. You know, um, eventually you're going to not have enough room and uh even now technically there there isn't enough room they're just making more you know so and that that also puts a, a strain on staffing on resources it also costs taxpayers a lot of money um it costs um i think the number was like 157 dollars per day per person in jail in pinellas county and so when you have you know hundreds more in there than there normally would be that adds up over the month, right? So there, there's a multi-level effect to this. Um, so I will be following up on that. Sorry, I don't have other follow-up details on it now. I've just been pulled in a bunch of different directions, so. Yeah, well, we look forward to hearing about your reporting on that and and also the reporting on the story about Amendment 4 and, and other election stories. So I want to thank you so much for coming on Tuesday Cafe today, Justin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Justin Garcia is the Tampa Bay Times state and local accountability reporter with a focus on law enforcement and the judicial system. And he's also looking at election integrity. And we've been speaking about elections police in Florida visiting the homes of petition signers. And if you missed any of this interview, you can watch it later today on WMNF.org. This is Tuesday Cafe. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF Tampa.